The movie begins in Animal Rescue Center, where a white puppy is playing with a squeaky carrot toy. A seven-year-old girl named Penny comes into the store and adopts the white puppy, giving it a collar with the name Tag Bolt. Five years later, Penny and Bolt are in the park, when Penny receives a phone call from her father telling her that something's come up at work and he won't be home for a while. As he warns Penny not to go back to the house, the evil Dr. Calico sneaks up on him. Before he cuts his call, Penny's father tells her not to worry, that Bolt will protect her, telling her that he has genetically altered Bolt, giving him a variety of superpowers, as well as the distinctive black lightning bolt mark on his flank. Penny uses a pair of binoculars to spy on one of Dr. Calico's associates, who is speaking to him via a hologram video. Dr. Calico says that he knows how to make Penny's father reveal his secrets. Calico's associate leaves the building, and Penny and Bolt follows him. They follow him down an alleyway, at which point he disappears, and then a car is seen racing towards them. Bolt hits the car with his head and it lands upside down behind him. Calico's associate is still alive but trapped in the car, and Penny told Bolt to hold the car over the side of a bridge in order to make him tell them where Calico is. He tells them that Calico is in Bolivia. Using her helmet computer, she sees a flight about to leave for Bolivia, so they head towards the airport. Now, Penny and Bolt continue on to the airport, but before they get far, they're confronted with an army of Calico's forces, helicopters, tanks, cars, soldiers, etc. Penny tells Bolt to speak, and Bolt braces himself then lets loose with his superbark, a supersonic boom that literally blows away the entire army. After that, Penny picks him up and takes a picture with him on her camera, laughing at him and telling him, you are my good boy. She walks off to the side and enters a trailer with Bolt's name on the side, after the door has closed, all the bad guys get up, revealing that the whole thing was actually part of a movie set for an adventurous action-packed television series Bolt. Meanwhile, inside a studio, a group of staff members entered the editing room, where the director is going through the footage from that day's shooting. Everything is going fine until they get to one shot, and there's a boom microphone visible in the background. The director flips out and starts screaming at the crew, yelling that the dog could have seen that. The director tells the crew that in order to give the character emotional depth, they make sure that the dog thinks the entire show is real, they hide all the studio equipment, use elaborate practical special effects, and most importantly, they never let Bolt off the set, ever. Because Bolt loves Penny and really believes he's protecting her, it gives the show an edge an acting dog wouldn't. Back in Bolt's trailer, Penny sticks up the photo she took on a wall amidst a group of other, similar photos. Bolt is still freaking out because he thinks she's still in danger, so he just stands at the door and growls, in protect mode. Telling him she's fine and he already saved her. Finally, Penny's cell phone rings, and she has to leave, locking Bolt inside the trailer as she goes. Outside the trailer, Penny's real mother and her agent meet her. Penny asks her agent if she can take Bolt home for the weekend the really annoying agent gives her a lot of roundabout talk and finally says no because Bolt is never allowed off the set. Then they leave the set. A little later, two of Dr. Calico's pet cats wander in. One of the cats is new, so the other cat tells him how Bolt believes it's all real. They jump on top of Bolt's trailer, open the sunroof and taunt him, telling him that even though he and Penny have escaped this time, they'll be back. Bolt tells them that he would super bark them away, except he needs them to pass a message on to Calico. The next day, back in the show, Penny and Bolt sneak into Dr. Calico's lair to try and rescue her father. This time we see how all the cameras are hidden and how they do some of the special effects. They sneak into the computer room, and Bolt knocks out the guard at the computer with a karate chop to the neck. Penny gets on the computer and tries to use it to find her father, but Dr. Calico interrupts them telling them that the whole thing was actually a trap. The computer chair turns into a capsule, trapping Penny inside, and she's lifted away as Bolt watches helplessly. He tries to run after her, but a staff member in protective gear grabs him and pulls him back, put him into a cage because today's shooting was over. Penny tries to get near him as he's being dragged away, but the staff won't let her. 
She demands that they let her see him because he thinks she's really in danger and doesn't understand that she's really okay. She isn't allowed to meet him. Back at Bolt's trailer, two cats come back to mock him. As they open up the sunroof, Bolt uses the staff member's head as a boost and jumps out of the trailer. He hears Penny calling for help actually a sound editor reviewing some footage and runs into a room with many boxes to be shipped. He tries to break the window with his super strength, but of course, it doesn't work, he falls into one of the boxes and is packed up by a staff member and shipped out. He wakes up on the other side of the country in New York, where the boxes have been delivered. The guy unpacking the boxes sees one of them moving and opens it, and Bolt jumps out at him, escaping out onto the streets of New York. He started looking for Penny. While he's in New York, Bolt tries to use his superpowers, but of course, they don't work. He assumes he must have been weakened somehow by Calico, the dog walker sees him and attaches a leash to his collar, assuming he was part of her group that got lost, but he breaks away and runs off. Next, he meets a group of pigeons, who think they've seen him somewhere before, but can't remember where. They see that Bolt still has some of the styrofoam packing peanuts from the box he was in stuck to his fur, Bolt, who has never heard of styrofoam before, concludes that it must be some kind of evil substance that negates his superpowers. He decides that he needs to find someone close to Dr. Calico, someone, like, a cat. The pigeons seem to get an idea and tell him they know just where to find such a cat. We cut to Mittens, an alley cat who rules over the pigeons of New York. Now Bolt attack Mittens, demanding that she bring him to Penny. Mittens thinks he's crazy and finally lies and says that she'll bring him to Penny. She sees a Hollywood address on the back of his collar tag and tells him that's where Penny is. After that Bolt ties her to his leash so that she can't escape. She shows Bolt a map and tells her that they're on one end of the country and Penny's on the other. Bolt still won't let her go, though, not until he finds Penny. Bolt finds a truck that two guys are loading the sofa into, and he sneaks in by hiding himself and Mitten's unconscious body underneath the sofa. By the time Mittens wakes up, they're on the move. Mittens obviously doesn't believe that Bolt has superpowers and just thinks he's crazy, as Mittens is about to hit him with the bat, but it's too heavy for her, and she crashes into a stack of boxes, sending one of them down onto Bolt's head. It doesn't hurt him, but it's filled with styrofoam peanuts, and Bolt freaks out, jumping out of the moving truck and rolling down a hill. Mittens is dragged along behind him. His paw is bleeding, although he doesn't know what it means, and he doesn't know what blood is. Suddenly his stomach growls, and he freaks out again, thinking that Mittens has poisoned him. Mittens is surprised that he doesn't know what it's like to bleed or be hungry, Mittens says that the antidote of this poison is food, so they find an RV rest stop where many RVs are parked, with families picnicking and grilling burgers. Mittens teaches Bolt how to beg so that when the families look out of their RVs and see him, they throw food for the cute doggy. One of the RVs is owned by a little old lady who has a bunch of pet hamsters. Most of them are in cages, but one of them is out in an exercise ball. When the old lady leaves to get some food for Bolt, the hamster recognizes him and rolls out of the trailer to follow them. The hamster introduces himself as Rhino and is totally excited to be meeting Bolt, whom he says is his hero. Mittens is astonished that he actually knows of Bolt and even more astonished when Bolt says that Rhino can come along with them. She thinks they should stay because new RVs will be coming through all the time, and they'll have a good place to sleep and a steady supply of food. She doesn't understand why Bolt is so hung up on saving Penny. Bolt says that Penny loves him, and Mittens just scoffs at the idea. Meanwhile, Bolt and Rhino decide that they will hop on a train by jumping on it as it passes underneath a bridge, although Mittens is convinced that they're all going to be killed. Bolt plans on using a banner hung up on the bridge to swing onto the train, Rhino is all excited as they're about to jump and says that it was really cool. Mittens realize that Bolt is just a TV dog ride as they jump down, and of course, it doesn't work out the way Bolt had planned it, they miss the train at first, then crash into it when they swing back and they fall off the train. They make their way to a suburb, where Mittens climbs a tree and Bolt barks at her. 
Mittens is disdainful now that she knows the truth about Bolt, and when he doesn't believe her, tells him to go ahead and blow her away with a super bark. Bolt braces himself, getting into his super bark pose, and he lets loose with a big one, which does nothing. Although Bolt was confused, he repeatedly tries, as Mittens makes sarcastic remarks from the tree branch above. Suddenly, Mittens saw a truck coming, and she tells Bolt to shut up because they have to run. Bolt keeps barking, though, and the truck sees them its animal control, and they grab Bolt and Mittens and put them in the truck to take them to the animal shelter. Meanwhile, Penny and her mom are photocopying mini lost dog posters with Bolt's picture on them. Penny's agent comes in saying they found Bolt. Penny is excited at first, but when they bring out the new dog, she realized that the new dog isn't Bolt. At first, she refuses to work with the new dog, but then Mindy, the network lady, comes in and explains to her that they have to get back to work on the show. She feels bad that Bolt's gone too, but tells Penny firmly that she needs to move on. In the truck, Bolt and Mittens are separated and put in cages next to each other. Bolt makes numerous attempts to escape, but none of his powers work. He ignores Mittens when she tries again to tell him that he doesn't really have superpowers and Bolt refuses to give up and keeps trying to bash his way outside with his head. Meanwhile, Rhino figures out how to open his ball from the inside, and he sets off after them. He jumps on when the truck stops for gas, and as Bolt continues trying to bash his way out, he starts pulling at the lock. He finally gets it free just as Bolt runs at the door again, and it breaks open. Bolt is ecstatic at this proof that his powers really do work, until he notices Rhino, who tells him that he opened the lock from the outside. Bolt suddenly realizes that Mittens was right all along, and he doesn't really have any powers. He runs his paw along his lightning bolt mark, and the makeup comes off on his paw. Rhino, astonished at his hero's doubt in himself, makes a speech telling Bolt that he's a hero to all animals who think they can't do anything and that right now Mittens needs him to be a hero for her. After a little more convincing, Bolt decides that even though he's not really a superhero, he still has to do what he can for Mittens and Penny. Bolt and Rhino follow the truck to the shelter, where they make a plan to sneak in. Rhino wants to do it just like an episode of Bolt's TV show, but Bolt, now that he knows it won't work that way in real life, decides they should be stealthier. After the guard leaves, Bolt and Rhino go in and Bolt sneaks into the cat area. Mittens is curled up in a small cage, resigned to her fate, and can't believe it when Bolt shows up. Bolt tells her that she was right and he doesn't have superpowers, and she's surprised that he came back for her anyway and runs out of the animal center. Meanwhile, the animals make it to a highway, and Bolt and Mittens have a somewhat awkward reconciliation. Bolt still wants to go to California because, once again, Penny is his person and he has to protect her. Mittens still doesn't understand, but is now willing to go along with him anyway. Mittens decides that Bolt should learn how to be a regular dog, one who knows how to beg and play with toys. Bolt thinks Mittens knows a lot about this sort of thing, and Mittens reveals that she used to have owners, but says she got tired of being owned and left when she got bored with them. Then she changes the subject by having Bolt stick his head out the window and let his tongue hanging out. Bolt says that it's awesome and that she should try it, but she says it's more of a dog thing. In the meantime, Mittens is teaching Bolt about how to be a real dog, she teaches him how to fetch, how to play with other dogs they meet, and everything else he's been missing this whole time. Bolt gets more excited about finding Penny now. By now, the animals have reached Las Vegas and are having the time of their lives. Mittens leads him to a pile of junk, where she set up some cardboard boxes, one for her and one for him. Bolt is surprised that Mittens wants to stay, Bolt still insists that he has to find Penny, so Mittens drags him out to where they can see a giant billboard advertising his TV show. She says that she's real, that this is real, and that the stuff on the billboard isn't. That Penny doesn't really love him, she's just an actress doing her job. Bolt refuses to believe it, and she gets angry enough that she reveals that she didn't leave her owners by choice, they just abandoned her one day. 
Bolt feels sorry for her, but he says that Penny is not the type of person who would abandon him and still insists that he needs to get back home. He hops on the back of a truck and heads off to Hollywood, still feeling bad about leaving his friends, but knowing he has to find Penny no matter what. Meanwhile, Rhino finds Mittens and asks where Bolt went. Mittens doesn't have the heart to tell him what really happened, so instead, she tells him that Bolt said he needed to go fight the green-eyed man alone. Rhino starts to go after him, and when Mittens asks why, he says that it's because you don't ever abandon your friends, no matter what they say. Back with Bolt, he had finally reached Hollywood, jumping off the truck when the driver stops to take a picture of the Hollywood sign. As he starts down into the city, he's accosted by three pigeons, but unlike the New York pigeons, these are ambitious writer wannabe pigeons who recognize him and try to pitch him an idea for the show. Bolt gets an idea and says that if they help him find Penny, he'd love to listen to more of their pitch on the way. The pigeons agree and lead him off to the studio. Meanwhile, Mittens and Rhino have also reached Hollywood, and they also head towards the television studio to find Bolt. Bolt manages to get into the studio without being noticed and even gets on set and finds his trailer again. It's playing with his old squeaky carrot. Suddenly, he heard Penny's voice, and with the carrot in his mouth, he runs off, he can see her at the end of a hallway, calling his name but not looking at him, and he runs towards her, happy to finally have found his person again. As he's almost at the end of the hallway, though, the trained dog runs into view, leaping into Penny's arms. Penny laughs and says, you're my good boy. Brokenhearted, Bolt slinks back into the shadows before Penny can see him, and turns and leaves, believing that Mittens was right when she said that Penny doesn't care about him. Just as he leaves, the trained dog jumps out of Penny's arms and runs to his trainer, who was his real master. Penny looks upset and hugs her mom, saying that she still misses Bolt. Up in the rafters, Mittens is standing, having seen the whole thing, and realizes that she was wrong. The TV crew sets up Dr. Calico's lair, attaching Penny onto a chest harness and making it look like she's tied up and hung from a rope. The set is dark and spooky, with lots of lit torches and fire effects. They start to film the scene. Penny calls for Bolt and the trained dog smashes through the fake doorway, growling. When Dr. Calico calls for his henchmen, though, the dog gets scared of their electrified gloves and runs away, accidentally knocking over some of the torches. The set catches fire, and all of the crew panicked, running over each other. In the confusion, no one notices Penny, still hooked up, calling for help. Bolt says that Mittens was right all along, but Mittens says that she was wrong and that Penny hasn't given up on him. Now Bolt can hear Penny calling for help from the studio. He runs back, intent on saving her. Back in the television studio, everyone has evacuated stage except for Penny. She manages to take off the fake rope effect and presses the emergency release on the chest harness to detach herself, dropping her to the ground. The room is all smoky now, and she can't see where she's going. Finally, they find each other. Penny can't believe it's really Bolt and is overjoyed that he really came back to her. She grabs a piece of rope and tells Bolt to use the zoom zoom trick, Bolt grabs onto the other end and uses it to guide her through the maze of wreckage. He finds an open vent that he can fit into that will take them outside, but Penny is too weak and collapses from smoke inhalation. She tells Bolt to run away, but he goes over and sits by her side, not willing to leave without her. Outside, Penny's mom is looking everywhere for her. Inside the building, Bolt had almost given up hope, one last time he braces himself, gets into his super bark pose, and barks as loudly as he can into the vent. A fireman hears the bark from outside, coming from the vent. He makes everyone be quiet, and they hear Bolt bark again, proving that they're still inside. The firemen rush in to rescue the two of them as Rhino proudly says that that was a real super bark. Penny's agent weasels his way into the ambulance and starts worrying about how this will affect her career, so Penny's mom throws him out of the ambulance and tells him that they quit. After this we see that, the show continues with the replacement of Penny and Bolt, where Penny gets abducted by aliens. 
On the other side, Rhino, Mittens, and Bolt have now moved in with Penny and her mom Bolt is no longer a TV star and instead gets to be a real dog all the time. Penny takes a picture of them all on the couch with her camera. The movie ends with a group of pigeons on the front porch, one of them says that that dog looks familiar and asks if they've seen him before.